This is the Greg Bedard Patriots Podcast with Nick Cavins. Okay, thanks for joining us on the Greg Bedard Patriots Podcast. We are very pleased to welcome in Greg Cosell. Everybody knows him over 40 years in NFL films. Uh, the guru over there, he's <laughs> the matchup show. You know, he's he's seen it all. He's done it all. He's And in fact, he's been one of my mentors over the years. He's welcomed me into NFL films to watch different film with different people. Um, I, I think he's one of the most knowledgeable people around the NFL in terms of film. And I love the way he analyzes things. And in, in fact, listening to him sort of recenters me in terms of I need to look at things a little bit more at a distance. Uh, Greg, thanks for joining us. I really appreciate it. Greg, it's my pleasure. It's been a while, my friend. It, it has been a while. Uh, but I wanted to get you in on this, and you're actually the first uh, outside guest that I've had on my podcast. And, you know, it, obviously the Patriots are at a weird time in uh, their existence, at least since Bill Belichick has been there with, with Tom Brady gone and what they went through last year with Cam Newton. So they are obviously looking for their next quarterback and and that could go in a variety of different ways and I wanted to have you on just to get sort of your opinion what you've seen how you think uh things fit with the Patriots in terms of guys that are available right now veterans and also some of the draftable uh quarterbacks so but first I want to start with let's go back to this past season I don't know how much you watched the Patriots considering they fell off a map there I about watched quite a bit Okay. So I just wanted to get your general impressions of the Patriots offense first year without Tom Brady, Cam Newton in there. Just what did you see? What did you think of Cam's fit? And and why did you think things didn't go great for the Patriots offense last year? You know, the best way I can answer that is just with what the film showed, because I don't know, Greg, as you know, the motivation, you know, I'm certainly not there. I don't know what's in Bill Belichick's head but they played as if they did not want the passing game to be a big factor in their offense. Now, I'm not going to sit here and say that's Cam Newton. Uh, Like I said, I don't know the reasoning behind it, but we know in a league in which the passing game is clearly more predominant with the exception of maybe two or three teams, more predominant than the running game and clearly more so that the Patriots were not one of those teams. Uh, There were numerous games that I watched on tape where I felt watching the tape that they don't really want to throw the ball very much. So, again, I can't speak to the reason why, but we know in today's NFL, it's hard to win and put up a lot of points playing that way. And and no question. I one thing I wanted to know, I certainly have my opinion from watching them over the years and no one expected Cam Newton to come in and be Tom Brady at the line of scrimmage before the snap. But uh, how did it appear to you that the Patriots were limited and what they did as far as checks, audibles, things like that, that we would have seen them do in the past? I would say that's fair. You know, it's always hard to know. So many people, as you know, on Twitter, social media, think they know what a quarterback's doing at the line of scrimmage. I'm not that smart, Greg. I don't know what the quarterback's doing at the line of scrimmage just because I hear him yell out a few words. Uh, So, you know, it it appeared to be the case that they did less at the line of scrimmage, because certainly one of the things that has made Tom Brady great, and there's obviously many things, but one of the things that I always thought made him great was he won a large percentage of the downs before the ball was snapped. Um, I never got the sense that that was Cam Newton's game, even in Carolina, which doesn't mean he never did that. Of course, every quarterback does that to some degree. But I thought that that was one of the the key uh, components of Tom Brady's game. So my sense is they did not do quite as much of that this year. But then again, I don't think their offense had as many elements to it, which goes back to my initial point. I can't speak to why that was the case, but it didn't strike me that it had as many elements to it. When Cam did throw the ball, or when he went, went back to pass, how did you think he did as a whole on the season as far as, uh, you know, making the right read and also, you know, just the way he threw the ball? I think he was pretty much the cam that he's always been. I think he's always been a little bit erratic. I think he's streaky. I think he'll miss throws that are 
relatively routine that he should make and then make some throws and you go, wow, that guy can really throw it. I think that's the way he's been much of his career. He's always had some scattershot tendencies and he'll miss some. Uh, so I think that he was really no different this year than he has been in, in previous years. He obviously threw the ball less than he had in previous years with the exception of a couple of games. Um, it was not an offense other than the running part of it, it was not really an offense built around him throwing the football. Yeah. And how did you, just real quick, how did you think he looked as a runner compared to, say, you know, years past in Carolina? Um, I, relatively the same. I mean, t- he mm-hmm. was never, because he's so big, yeah. I never viewed him as explosive the way you think of a Michael Vick, a Lamar Jackson. He doesn't, right. you know, he doesn't move like that just because he's 6'5", 260 pounds. Um, so I sense that he ran pretty much the same. I mean, they used him a lot in that regard. I don't know what his number of carries were, but there were a lot of design runs in their offense. Yeah. Uh, and, and one more thing on Cam, um, you know, and I've talked to people around the Patriots and um, uh, trust me when I say this, that probably the chances are pretty good that Cam is back next year um, because of Bill's relationship with him. I think also how he appeals to other players helps them maybe sell the program a little bit, um, which is causing some Patriots fans to go jump off the Zakem bridge. Um, (laughs) Just your general opinion on if Cam is back with, and they are going to be aggressive at wide receiver, um, getting better at tight end, upgrading the weaponry. Belichick knows that they can't go on with what they had the past two years. They can't, if Cam is back, as a quarterback and he has to play with an upgraded weapons. Do you, do you think that they could be better as a whole on offense with a year two of cam? I would say they will be better. I can't sit here and say they'd be great. Um, clearly based on what you said, and I know you have connections within the building. Uh, they probably did not throw the ball as much because they did not feel they had the personnel on the perimeter and a tight end, clearly tight end too. I don't know what they think of um, uh, the UCLA kid, um, Asi Asi, I believe, mm-hmm. and I liked him coming out. So I don't know what they see him down the road because I think he's a pretty athletic kid. So I don't know if they think, hey, he takes a step in his second year or whether they still need to address the tight end position significantly. But um they're going to have to throw the ball more and throwing it more means they're going to have to throw it better. Uh, If they believe that cam is the guy to do that, which it sounds like when you're saying they do, then they clearly need upgrades at wide receiver. It's look wide receivers, you know, Greg, almost every year now going back quite a number of years, wide receiver and, and corner by extension are the two positions in which the most players are drafted in every NFL draft because they're so important in the NFL. It's very, very difficult to play in today's NFL if you can't throw the football. And say what you want about Cam, he's obviously had great, great years in this league. He was an MVP, got a team to a Super Bowl, and has had a number of great years. But he's not, even at his best, a precision passer. He's not the kind of guy that just sticks it right on receivers' hands and lets, you know, and makes them better, per se. I hate to be cliched, but you know what I mean. Yeah. You know, he needs weaponry. Yeah, absolutely. And just to, just a quick aside to let you know on Aussie Aussie, I think they like him as an athlete and he showed up fast in training camp. But then the way it was put to me was, you know, look, the NFL can be tough to play in. And some guys like guys who were at Michigan, it got a little tough and he transferred to UCLA, which was a little bit easier. You're, you're basically put to a moment where either you push through and, and, and embrace how tough the NFL is, especially a team like the Patriots. And he probably or did, you, right? Yeah. And, yeah. You know, or yeah. you sort of take a step back. And yeah. And, he and took again, a step I don't back. Know, I don't know yep. the kid. I, you know, I'm just sitting watching tape and he was, he had very good athletic traits. I yep. thought he could be a good player. Uh, obviously in any NFL city, more, more so maybe than any with Bill Belichick, if you can't push through, you're going to have a tough time and we'll see how he responds from year one to year two. Yep. Absolutely. I think he's going to be put to the test early and they're hoping he hits because they need him. Uh, let's go through some of the veteran options that'll probably come via trade, what have you. Uh, I think I have one free agent on here that could be available. And I'm just curious on your, because I a lot of these guys I haven't watched a ton of. Um, 
and I'm just curious what you how how do you think they would do uh, with in the Patriots system uh, with an increased role? And number one is Gardner Minshew from the Jaguars. Yeah, I always liked Minshew. Um, obviously, you know, coming off 2019, I thought he could be a starter in the NFL. Now, by saying that, I didn't mean he'd be a top three or a top five player, right. a certain kind of player. You know, if you had a nice running game, a running game that was meaningful, you know, not a running game that was an aside, but a run game that was a factor every week and somewhat of a foundation. Um, and you had some good weapons, which, you know, I thought Jacksonville had, but obviously didn't work out their offensive line wasn't particularly good you need that as well I think Minshew can line up and play I mean I thought Minshew could line up and play in the same way that Kirk Cousins can line up and play yep. and and people can say what they want about Kirk Cousins and maybe he's not a Super Bowl winner I don't you know we don't know any of that um, but you know a guy throws 30 touchdowns every year and you know about 10 interceptions and you can line up and play with Kirk Cousins I thought Minshew could be that guy uh, obviously things went south in, in Jacksonville, but I think in the right scenario with weapons and, and a back, and by the way, I really like Damian Harris, just as, mm, a, as an So aside. do I. <laughs> I really like him. I think he's their better runner than Michelle, yep. but that's, you know, that's my pointless point yep. of view as Billy Joel once said. Um, anyway, you know, I think Minshew can line up and play with weapons. And obviously you need enough of a defense because you can't ask Minshew to have to put up 30 every week. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, number two on my list. Um, and, and if this guy comes available, it means that two teams have taken long looks at him and decided he is not starter caliber uh, for them, or at least at any point, any time in the future. And look, let's be honest. He's had a really rough go with a lot of OCs and play callers and things right. like that. And that's Marcus Mariota. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure about Marcus Mariota. I, I don't know how well he throws it. And when I say I don't know, it's not that I don't have an answer. I mean, from studying tape, I'm not sure if he's really a, a good enough thrower overall. He obviously has mobility. You can have the design run game. He can make second reaction plays with his legs, clearly. Um, I, I just, I don't feel real good about him in an offense that probably requires a lot of work. Um, and this has nothing, I don't want people to think I'm saying he's not smart. It has nothing to mm -hmm. do with that. Um, I just don't know if he's a good enough thrower to make all the throws with the consistency that you need. Yep. And, and I tend to agree with you. Um, you know, a guy that we've seen up close here for a couple of years um, who could become available. I doubt he, they would trade him to the Patriots, but you never know. Uh, Sam Darnold um, with the Jets, if they go quarterback at number two. Yeah. Um... Darnold's a fascinating guy. I, I, I had some concerns based on his college tape when I did, did him coming out of USC. I thought there was a little bit of a reckless, undisciplined nature to his play. I thought he had poor lower body mechanics. I thought that led to him being inaccurate, poor ball placement on routine throws. And it's always easy to talk about the, the, the supporting cast. We just did that with the Patriots and there's no question supporting casts matter. But one thing I learned, and, and I learned this from Bill Walsh, who I was fortunate to know, um, that when you evaluate a quarterback, you have to isolate the quarterback. And I think that Sam Darnold needs work. Now, having said that, I think he's talented. I think he throws mm -hmm. the ball well. He's obviously got movement. He can make plays on the move. Um, then it depends on how important you think that trade is in today's NFL. And there's, we can probably get to that with a couple of quarterbacks coming out in this draft, but, uh, but I think Darnold has talent and traits to work with, but I think he needs work. Yeah. Uh, and the final guy, because I don't think we need to get into Jimmy Garoppolo because we know he fits in the scheme and the Patriots would uh, like to have him back if the 49ers upgrade at quarterback. Um, and that's uh, Andy Dalton. Um, what did you think of him in uh, Dallas when he played this year? And uh, does he still have the ability to, you know, lead a hopefully more talented team and uh, a better coaching staff? Yeah, I was I, I was a little disappointed. I thought he had some moments, but I also thought he was really more inconsistent and erratic than I thought he would be. Because I thought, again, I really liked Dak Prescott. And I thought when he got hurt, I didn't think Dalton would do the same thing. But I mm -hmm. thought he would come in and that their offense, 
in relative terms, wouldn't miss a beat. You know, not that he would throw for 450 yards. That's not my point. But they, they'd still have a relatively efficient passing game. They have three quality wideouts. I thought their offense and their pass game would still be pretty solid. It was very inconsistent. So I was a little disappointed with Andy Dalton uh, this year. So, again, you raised the point, you know, if he came to New England, because he does, he can't play in this league. We know he can. He was on his way to being an MVP a number of years ago, and he's and he did have good years in Cincinnati. Um, and and I think he made the playoffs something like six years in a row. Did he not? I forget the number. Yeah. He 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 won games. Um, for those who believe it's just the quarterback that wins games in the NFL, but the Bengals won games with Andy Dalton at quarterback. Uh, so I was a little disappointed overall. So I don't know where he stands in his career right now. Yeah. Uh, interesting. So let's go into uh, some of the draft guys right now, and we won't really touch on uh, Trevor Lawrence and uh, Zach Wilson, who I heard you on Ross Tucker's podcast. Your you know, we- weekly appearances are uh, appointment listening uh, for me. And, um, you-, you know, you're very high on those two guys. I'm, I- I'm more curious. We'll get into some of the depth in this quarterback class and somebody who I trust has told me that, the Patriots like the depth in this class, and I'll be interested to see who who might pop for you there. But, um, you know, Mac Jones uh, out of Alabama, obviously the Nick Saban connection. Right. Um, has a lot of people curious. What do you think of Mac? I think Mac Jones is – you have to answer this question to, to determine what your view is of Mac Jones, okay? And I think different people – and I've talked to some, not with the Patriots, obviously, just, you know, coaches, people along those lines, Mm -hmm. you have to answer this question. Do you view movement ability, second reaction ability as a required trait now to play quarterback in the league? Let's put Tom Brady aside. Mm -hmm. He's the greatest of all time. Okay. Let's put, unless you believe Mac Jones is Tom Brady. And I don't say that (laughs) in a, in a sarcastic manner, unless you believe he's going to be that guy. If you don't believe he's that level of player, then your view about mobility and second reaction improvisation will factor greatly into your worldview of Mac Jones because he's not a good athlete, he's not big, and he does not have second reaction ability. And he's not a big arm guy. Now, he can make all the throws in the context of specific offenses, but he's not a big arm guy. So you have to decide how important second reaction ability is to you. Um, I've had many coaches tell me now that they view it as critical. I had a GM who you and I both respect tremendously say that you'd like to have it, but he doesn't view it as as essential. So it comes down to what your worldview of that is. I vacillate because I'm old. I'm old school, Greg, because I'm old. So I vacillate, you know, but if, if you believe second reaction ability is critical, and you have to have it, then Mac Jones is not a first round pick yeah. because he does not have it and he's not a good athlete. I'm I'm just curious, um, you know, to to get a sort of put this in context. So if I say like Joe Burrow and Justin Herbert, where do you put them in terms of movement ability and second reaction throws? Just to get a context oh, for Max. They they have it. Burrow okay. is Burrow yeah. is really light on his feet, a really good athlete. Um, and Herbert's First of all, Herbert's 6'6", 240. <laughs> yeah. you know, Jones is 6'2", 217 with not a great body. And see, that would concern me a little bit too only for this reason. And I don't know Mac Jones. And you hear all oh, his teammates love him and all. You know, yep. you got to be careful about that. Not that they don't love him. That's not my point. Mm-hmm. But you got to be careful about the, the the love because I remember reading Bruce Arian's book, you know, the quarter, I think was the quarterback whisperer. You probably read it as well. Yep. And mm-hmm. he talked about Kelly Holcomb, you know, and how he was awesome and just everything you want in a quarterback. And, you know, and, and I don't know Kelly Holcomb, but obviously we know Kelly Holcomb was pretty much a journeyman just because mm-hmm. guys love you and you have, you know, a great attitude that doesn't make you a great quarterback. No one's a great quarterback because they take their offensive line out to dinner on Thursday nights. That's not why guys are great quarterbacks. So, my guess is Mac Jones from everything I've read is, is an amazing kid that, that, so let's put that aside, but Herbert and Burrow are high level athletes and Herbert's six, six, two forty. So, yeah. 
you know, I think that that those two guys in comparison to Mac Jones, I don't think that those are valid comparisons. Okay. okay. Uh, next up, um, Justin Fields, who, if I, if I remember correctly, I think, I think um, you had some concerns about after watching the film on him. Yeah. And you got to be careful about those concerns too, because I had concerns about Justin Herbert and those concerns did not show up this past year. Mm-hmm. So he's a high level traits guy. Big arm, highly athletic, solidly built, can make all the throws, um, tough, competitive. I think if you look at the traits, you say, wow. Um, But I think he was a little deliberate in a lot of things he did, um, which you could probably say the same about Herbert coming out of Oregon. Um, So I, I think it becomes a projection in how you see what you can do with him. Uh, so I'm not going to sit here and say, you know, hey, uh, I, I would never draft him. You know, I think the term I used was that he scares me a little, but mm-hmm. that doesn't mean that he can't play or that if he's coached well and worked through uh, that he couldn't develop into a really good player. Uh, but I think you have to be aware of what the tape shows, particularly this year where there's no combine. You know, I'm sure teams will obviously being a quarterback teams will have private workouts with him. And I don't know what the rules are going to be. So you may know that more than I, yeah. but you know, you're going to have to do your research. Um, I've heard nothing that indicates that he's a bad kid or anything. That's not what I'm speaking about. Um, so I think, you know, there'd be some things that concern you on the tape and then you have to make that projection. Now, as you and I both know, quarterbacks that have great movement ability, they can often compensate and camouflage for some of their weaknesses as they develop. Mm-hmm. And I think that's something to keep in mind. Yeah, absolutely. And and I totally agree with your points on that. And also that, you know, these movement type quarterbacks, like it's like you talked about, it's the projection. Like when is it going to click for them? Sort of like the upper level, um, you know, passing uh, traits that you're going to pick up in the NFL. Are they ever going to pick it up? I mean, you know, look at Josh Allen. All of a sudden, year three, he takes off and you watch him doing all this stuff, pre-snap and anticipation throws and all this stuff. Where yeah. two years ago, you were like, no and, chance. And when he came out, look, you remember when he came out, because the tape told you this. It's not, it wasn't, you know, it's easy to say, oh, everybody was wrong about Josh. Right. And no, no one's wrong because you're watching the tape and the tape tells you that, hey, this is what he's struggling with. Obviously, if he improves in those areas and he, look, he imp- his accuracy and ball placement and I can't remember in all my years, I just finished my 41st season in all my years. I don't remember a guy whose ball placement improved so dramatically, Mm -hmm. you know, you can't for the people who loved him, they say, Oh, see, I told you. So it's not, I told you so, or you're wrong. It's here's what the tape shows. And can he improve? You know, guys do get coached too, Greg, as you know, I mean, Mm -hmm. that's, that's what happens. It is a coach's job to run a good system, to coach the quarterback, to ideally present, particularly in normal down and distance situations where the defense doesn't have the tactical advantage to present really well-designed route concepts and define reads and define throws for the quarterback. That's what coaching is. That's the job of the coach. So, you know, when you watch Buffalo's offense, and I really like a lot of the things Brian Dable did, as yep. I'm sure you did, you know, you see some really nice things that defined it nicely for Josh Allen. Absolutely. Um, and speaking of that, this next guy might need some of that. Uh, another uh, small school guy like, like Josh Allen, uh, Trey Lance, yeah. um, who I have not watched played. I think what he's played like one game in like two years or something. Yeah, like and that, that was a bad you... game. He didn't play well in that yeah. game, but it was one game this year and you can't really judge him on that. Um, look, I had a coach tell me uh, that after Trevor Lawrence, he loved Trey Lance, uh, all the other guys. So, you know, mm-hmm. you're going to get mixed opinions. I liked Trey Lance's tape. I watched seven games from 2019. Um, he's a twitchy kid. He's a sudden athlete, live arm, moves well. Um, not not Lamar Jackson, but he's one of a kind. But, you know, obviously gives you the design run game, gives you the mobility. Um at times has a little bit of a windup that I think can be tightened a little. You won't change it mm-hmm. totally, but I think it could be tightened up a little. Um, he's an intriguing prospect. Now, common sense tells you that he may not be ready to play week one, but we never know that anymore. You know how that goes. Yep. You know, we say that about a lot of these guys. Oh, they're not going to be ready. And then they play week one. And, <laughs> and even teams, when they draft guys, 
you know, oh, we're we're definitely not playing him week one. Yeah. Then of course he plays week one, or we're definitely not playing him his first season, and then week mm-hmm. three he's the starter. So all that stuff doesn't mean anything when they say it. <clears throat> um, the fact that he didn't play college football this year does mean that you know he just he's going to have to get up to speed with the speed of the NFL. But there's a lot of traits there uh, that you would really like. And again, if you believe in mobility, he has that. So let's get into the secondary guys a little bit. And, and uh, you know, I won't ask you for all of them because you've already been grace with, gracious with your time. But I did want to start with uh, Kellen Mond from Texas A&M. Yeah. Um, I, I'm curious about uh, what you've seen out of him. Yeah, Kellen Mond is is – really interesting to me and I you know I I to be honest with you I haven't done him yet this year Mm -hmm. I I watched him last summer like eight games um so you know I watched him in 2019 now obviously my guess is quarterbacks are a little different in some ways because it's not that their traits change like you know you can watch a running back you know from one year to the next and you're not necessarily going to go oh my god that guy Mm -hmm. looks totally different it's like i'm watching a different guy you know you normally don't see that um he's going to be polarizing i think because Mm -hmm. he was a big time recruit he's a four-year starter in the sec i think that he's really inconsistent as a passer as i recall i thought his ball placement was erratic he's got a delivery that i struggle with but Again, I remember struggling with Philip Rivers coming out of North Carolina mm-hmm. State, as a lot of people did with that funky delivery. And I think he did OK. And I'm not comparing Mond and Rivers. I'm just saying that that could be just a personal thing with me. Um, mm-hmm. He's got some mobility. I think he'll be polarizing. I think you'll find some teams that really like him. And I think you'll find others that would say he's a sixth round pick. I think that for those and there are a lot of these teams, as you well know, who will say four year starter in the SEC, I'm going to draft him. Playing mm-hmm. high level competition, week in, week out, lined up and played. I don't believe he missed a start. So I think he's going to have that going for him, whatever that means. Should that supersede your view of his traits and his attributes and his characteristics? To me, no, but I can tell you for a fact that it will for some. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he is going to be an interesting guy. Um, the, the the following guys, I'm just going to sort of group, and then you sort of tell me. And some uh, I, I may not have seen yet. Okay. I've watched, let's see, I've watched about eight or nine guys. Okay. Um, just guys that you think, hey, when you think of the Patriots, like, hey, I could see them liking this guy or what they've seen. Uh, Kyle Trask, Ian Book, Jamie Newman, David Mills, Anybody else that's come on your radar who you think yeah, the I watched, Patriots I, might I've be seen all those guys. I've seen all those okay. guys because uh, Newman I did last summer. Newman, I, I like Newman's tape. Um, I think he can be an NFL starting quarterback. I think he's got good traits. Um, again, a guy who didn't play this year, I don't know what that means as far as what his 2021 NFL season would be, but I like uh, Jamie Newman. I think he can play. Um, Ian Book. I don't think Ian Book is is an overly talented guy. I think he's one of those guys that people will probably like him because, you know, he'll be a tough guy. He'll have, you know, he'll have all those things we say about a quarterback who's not overly talented. Plus, he's six feet. You know, he's an instinct quarterback more than a timing rhythm pocket thrower. Mm -hmm. He looks like a college quarterback. He's got good mobility. He makes a lot of second reaction plays, both throwing and running. Again. That has increasing value. Um, There'll be serious questions, I think, about his ability to execute an NFL passing game with its emphasis on timing and route progressions. I think he's got to develop a better feel in the pocket. Um, He's not a real good thrower of the football. So what that means to a team, that's that's a hard question. Yep. Trask is is another one of those guys. He's a little lead footed. He's 6'5", so he's big. He's probably close to 240. So, you know, at least he has size going for him. He's not a power arm guy. Like, you know, when I watch the SEC, as we all do, because the SEC, you know, is good football, so you watch college games, you'd hear the announcers say, man, he's got a big arm. He's got a good arm, not a big Mm -hmm. arm. He's not a Carson Palmer thrower. Excuse me. So 
And he's a guy, Greg, that quite honestly doesn't have much movement at all. He ran mm-hmm. a really well schemed system at Florida, made the necessary throws within that system. I'm not sure he gets out of much trouble in the NFL. I think he's he's a little statuesque. Um, I don't want to say his feet are leaden um, because that has a really bad connotation, but he is not going to move very well. Hmm. And have you seen Mills? Yeah, I did. I think Mills should have stayed in school. He's, I think, Hmm. only started 13 games. He's, um, for the most part, a pocket quarterback. He's not immobile. He's not a statue. Um, But to me, he would have to make his living as a pocket quarterback. And what I saw, and I watched every one of his games this year at Stanford, because I believe he played five. Um, His ball placement needs to become much more precise as a pocket thrower. Um, His sense of timing and rhythm within the offense he was in in, at Stanford, which had a lot of pro concepts, needed to be better. So he was a big time recruit coming out of the Atlanta area. I think he might have been the number one quarterback in the nation coming out of high school. Uh, So there's traits. I would think he would need some work, but he's going to need three things to be an NFL quarterback, in my view. He's going to need to be more precise with his ball placement. He's going to have to have develop a better feel for the timing and rhythm of whatever pass game he's in. And he's going to have to develop movement within the pocket. That's going to be critical. He's going to need those three things to become a successful NFL quarterback. Interesting. Yeah. I had somebody who I trust tell me that, um, you know, that they really like the depth of this class, that they think that, you know, in the right scheme, with the right coaching, right surrounding cast and, you know, consistent coaching that uh, there there's, there's a decent amount of starters in, in this, yeah. in this group. You just nailed it. I mean, and people, I'm not sure people think about that a lot. It's, it's yeah. coaching, it's scheme, mm-hmm. you know, there's very few transcendent quarterbacks, you know, if you're just looking at pure ability, you know, we know Mahomes, I personally think Josh Allen, and this might be a controversial take. I don't view it as that. I think Josh Allen is the most talented, physically gifted quarterback in the NFL because he's 6'5", 240. Mahomes Mm -hmm. is not. Um, I think Herbert has high-level traits. But there's not going to be 10 of those guys that come out every year. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm not sure I would put Trevor Lawrence quite in that category, to be honest. Mm -hmm. I like Trevor Lawrence. I think he's quarterback one in this class. But – I'm not sure I'd put him quite at that level of traits. Yeah. Yeah. Without question out of that secondary group, is there, is there a name that you think that has a better chance to pop than the others? Well, I'll tell you a guy I watched and was, and again, when you talk about, you were talking secondary groups. So I don't yep. want people to think the name I'm going to mention that I think he's going to be a hall of famer or a mm-hmm. day one starter, but I was kind of intrigued with Sam Ellinger from uh, Texas. Mm. Cause I watched him yeah. and super competitive kid again, a little erratic with his ball placement, but has, he can run a bit, uh, you know, big body, not tall, but, but put together mm-hmm. um, aggressive mindset and mentality. I'd be curious. And again, it comes back to team scheme coaching where he is in three years. Uh, he's a guy that I'm going to be very curious about. Mm. Interesting. All right. So we'll wind up on that note. Uh, Greg, again, thanks you so much for coming on. I, I always, I always listen to you no matter where you're on. Cause I always learn something and uh, you know, thanks so much for coming on the Greg Bedard Patriots podcast. And uh, I look forward to uh, speaking with you again down the road. That was fun, Greg. You know, you know, I love making this stuff up as I go. Exactly. <laughs> thanks, Greg. Thanks, Greg.